Hi, I'm Michelle Obama, and this is the Michelle Obama Podcast. I want to start by giving you all a little background on what it is I hope to do with this podcast. So I thought I'd begin by taking you through the journey that brought me here today. I can't do that. It starts back when our family left the White House. It has been the honor of my life to serve you. For eight years, my life was full of crazy schedules. I was always juggling big initiatives, speeches, state dinners, not to mention trying to raise two daughters and just keeping my head above water. But once Barack's second term was over and the presidency had come to an end, I finally had some time to breathe. So for a few months, the first year really, I spent a lot of time thinking, uh, talking with friends and family, really just being, if you know what I mean. I reflected back on my time in the White House, of course, but I went even deeper. I look back on the whole arc of my life. If you remember, I said, mm-hmm. you can lay in the bed if you want. I already have my education. Well, that, <laughs> that message, Craig, rings through my head every day. And I uncovered all sorts of memories, all these tiny little moments and stories that the gift of hindsight had filled with new meaning. For example, the way I played by myself when I was little in my house with my blocks and dolls until I finally got the courage to go outside and play with the other neighborhood kids. Right. You had a, like, there was a force field around that house. You never left. <laughs> I know. Or the dinner discussions that I had with my mom and dad and brother growing up. Or as I got older, the long talks that Barack and I had when we were first dating or conversations on park benches or standing at the kitchen counter that I had with my girlfriends back in Chicago. (laughs) Women who were also juggling careers and partners and little kids. At one point, I even pulled out an old journal that unlocked all kinds of feelings and stories. I remember I'd written about a, a talk I had with my mom when she picked me up from the airport after a work trip. At the time, I was really wrestling with what I wanted to do with my career, whether I should stay in a big law firm or jump into public service. Mom, in her own special way, gave me advice as we were driving home. I remember she said, make the money first and worry about happiness later. (laughs) She's always had a way of cutting to the truth. I also wrote in my journal about a night not long before my father died when I was just hanging out with my brother and some of our friends in the booth at a neighborhood bar and grill on Ashland and 55th. It was a simple memory. I mean, we were all just young at the time, young professionals trying to climb up the ladders in our careers, but That night was really just an easy night that stuck with me for some reason. We were there for hours, talking, swapping stories, sports, music, whatever was going on in the world at that time. And partway through the night, an old man who reminded me of my grandfather walked over to the jukebox and punched in some jazz and blues songs. And the way that music just took us to another place. It reminded us of our fathers and the kind of music they played. Just the sound of that music brought back so many feelings, feelings of comfort and home. And the way you feel when you're just sitting and sorting through life with a bunch of friends. Going back through memories like those, simple memories, reminded me that the main truth of my story wasn't anything I did as First Lady, but the lifelong experiences I shared with the people I loved, the conversations that helped me understand myself more clearly 
whenever I came to a fork in the road. <laughs> to give yourself permission just to be different than the world expects you to be. Mm. That was my wake-up call. Menopause is puberty in reverse. Mm. And you know how teenagers act? Mm. Because their hormones, they're up, they're down. They're yeah. here, they're there. Ah, uh -huh, they're screaming one minute, hate you, mom, I love you. Because really, that's how we find our truth, isn't it? By leaning on those around us, by opening ourselves up to one another, and working through whatever uncertainties and questions we may have together. That process of reflection ended up producing my memoir, Becoming. And after it was published, I traveled the country and the world having lots of conversations in big venues, concert halls, sports arenas. Atlanta showed up tonight. But I also had some really wonderful conversations in small groups. High schools, churches. How, put this? How do you feel transitioning back to your normal life? Because like, with a group of Native American youth on a reservation, conversations about how important it is for each of us to really own and understand our own stories, to recognize not just the big triumphs, but the struggles and doubts and everything in between. And here's the thing: I left each of those conversations feeling like I wanted to keep talking, that I wanted to dig deeper, that I wanted to keep asking more questions and hearing more people's stories. So that's what brings us here today. I hope this podcast can be a place for all of us to explore big topics together to sort through the questions that we're all trying to answer, to open up, be a little vulnerable, and hopefully have some fun along the way. Look, I don't want this podcast to be prescriptive or present anyone's ideas as truth. I just wanted to feel like we're sitting together on a park bench or in the booth of a restaurant with a jukebox playing. And most importantly, I hope this podcast sparks ideas and topics that all you listeners can open up with in your own circles. Maybe it'll inspire you to have some conversations with loved ones that you've been putting off. In this first season, you'll be hearing me talk with some of the people I'm closest with. My mom, my brother, friends, colleagues, many others. And I wanted to start at the most basic level. In these episodes, we'll be discussing the relationships that make us who we are. Sometimes that might be as personal as our relationship with ourselves or how we navigate our health and our bodies at various points in our lives. In other episodes, we'll be talking about what the challenges and joys of being a parent are or a spouse, the growth we gain from leaning on colleagues and mentors, the friends who help us sort through the toughest times. What I love about these conversations is that they're topics and issues that we are all dealing with, no matter what's going on, whether that's a pandemic or a nationwide reckoning with race or just any old summer afternoon sitting with our own thoughts. We're gonna start by discussing one of those relationships that can take some time to figure out. And that's our relationship to our communities and to our country. Sometimes this relationship might be a source of fulfillment or meaning or joy. Other times, it might provoke questions that we don't quite know the answer to. What we're really talking about is our place in this world, how we feel about it, and what we can do with the power we have. The Michelle Obama Podcast is a Spotify original podcast. The first episode is out July 29th. Listen for free on Spotify.